This episode is brought to you by Windrose Recovery, a family of premier addiction treatment programs in southeastern Wisconsin. Privately owned, Windrose Recovery offers a full continuum of personalized care for those struggling with addiction, including the Manor for residential treatment, Midwest Detox for inpatient detoxification, and Windrose Counseling for outpatient treatment. With highly personalized treatment focused on trauma, Dr. Chantel Thomas and her expert team offer an authentic experience, creating the kind of deep emotional change that's crucial for long-term recovery. If you or someone you love is struggling with addiction, call Windrose Recovery at 414-409-5300. You can learn more about Windrose Recovery by clicking the link in the show notes or by visiting windroserecovery.com. Thank you for listening to The Path to Authenticity. My name's Tom Gentry. I think of this show as the opposite of small talk. You'll hear real conversations with real people who know who they are. We talk about what makes them who they are, how they became who they are, and how we might become truer expressions of who we are. This is Lucia Capacchioni. I'm Dr. Chantal Thomas. I'm Jen Conway. I am Mimi Langlois. I'm Sari Rudin. I'm Terry Shapiro. I'm Jasmine Estevez. This is David Paul. This is John Thomas. This is Dr. Lalita Saglani. Hi, I'm Ami Quiricone. I'm Tyson Stark. My name is Brian Phillip. I'm Donna Marks. I'm Paul Hamblin. This is Joan Marino. My name is Danny LaBerry. I'm Hannah Euler. I'm Eric Bricker. I'm Kevin Peterson. My name is Denise Musser. I am Tyrell William Lisson. I'm Spencer Reese. Hi, this is Mike Milligan. Hi, I'm Olga Rocha. Hi, I'm Tiffany Warner. This is Michael Weiner. This is Craig Haverhurst. This is Lauren Artrish. I'm Jessica Baum. I'm Ed Tilton. I'm Elise Gafkin. I'm Anthony Gaber. This is Heather Sundquist Hall, and this is The Path to Authenticity. 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 <laughs> What up, podcast world? Rodney Force here, filling in for Taylor Krause. Or guess what, motherfuckers? This is the goddamn motherfucking path to motherfucking authenticity. <laughs> there you go. to Authenticity proudly supports the I Speak Media Foundation, advancing media literacy education through an evolving series of outreach programs within the communities that need it most. For more information, visit ispeakmedia.org. If this is your first time here, Thanks for checking it out. If not, thanks for coming back. I'm Tom Gentry. This is The Path to Authenticity. Episode 100. It's pretty hard for me to believe that uh, I've done 100 episodes at this point. You know, it seems like yesterday or the day before it was just an idea and... um, it's just become something that means a lot to me and going forward here, stepping into 2021, um, have a lot of stuff that I want to do with this podcast. Eventually, if you've listened, you've heard me say before, probably that I really want to do it twice a week. And I did that for a stretch last spring, but Kind of shifted gears, decided to spend more time on a better website experience for the listeners. So a lot of good has happened, especially in the last, well, this year, this crazy year of COVID-19. I've The podcast has actually come a long way. So this episode features a conversation with the artist Heather Sunquist hall who painted the cover art for episode 100 
which is available for purchase. There's a link in the show notes or you can visit goldenhourprints.com. A portion of the proceeds will go to the iSpeak Media Foundation. And really proud to be able to do that with Heather. And we kind of talk about that and just uh, sort of where this thing is going and, and about what this means to me. And, you know, it's just really been a great experience for me. So I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the people who have made this possible. Um, first and foremost guest of the first episode and several others, the author and art therapist, Dr. Lucia Capcioni, my friend, Jen Conway, who was the guest of episode three, Mimi Langla, Danny LaBerry, Sari Rudin, Spencer Reese, Brian Phillips, John Thomas from Psychology Today, Dr. Lolita Suglani, my friend Terry Shapiro, who's the executive director of the Hanley Center at Origins, Dr. Donna Marks, who has been so important to me in my life over the last few years. Such a great support. Episode 16, I talk about that, my relationship with her. Um, and if you've listened, you know she's my therapist. Joan Marino, uh, another just stellar therapist. Anthony Guibert, the poet, who was, it was his publicist who was kind of the first to reach out and ask if he could be on the show, which was very flattering to me. Mike Milligan, who's from my hometown of Kokomo, Indiana. He's a blues guitarist and the first musician I had on. Eric Bricker, my good friend, Tyrell William Listen, who has the band A History podcast. Tiffany Werner, licensed mental health counselor. My friend Jessica Baum, who's going to be publishing a book in 2021. Lauren Artris, who was on episode 25 and is going to be on here again soon to talk about her latest book. The music journalist, uh, Nashville-based Craig Havighurst, Dr. Michael Weiner, my friend who's been on a couple episodes, uh, Denise Mustard, Ami Quiricone, who has uh, One Broken Mom, the podcast, which is incredible, my friend Tyson Stark, Paul Hamlin, thank you so much for Paul and the Bridge to Recovery, who were the first sponsors of the podcast. Hannah Euler, who's just a luminary. Uh, my friend David Paul, the beautiful Jasmine Estevez, the interventionist Kevin Peterson, Olga Roca, the author Jane Benz, Joshua Shea, who's probably the foremost expert in pornography addiction. Um, Amy Blaschka, who's a ghostwriter, Ali Beardsall, Jana Angel, my neighbor, uh, Taylor Krausor, who you heard, uh, do the character he created at the beginning, Rodney Force, which, uh, I hope someday more of you know about Rodney Force. Also the author, Jackie Shannon Hollis, Jill Lang, coach Jilly, my friend, Kim Litton. Author Laura Weissman, my friend Ed Tilton, who probably the highlight of uh, the end of 2019 going into 2020 has been to have a friendship develop with Ed. He's just been such a good friend to me and a support to me. And he's also collaborated with me on some segments of the podcast, Getting Real About Manhood. We're going to be doing a lot more of that in 2021. He's had some significant life changes over the last few months and and um, hasn't been as available as he was before. But we're going to get back to that. Excited about that. Um, Colby Castillo, Rose Guerrero, Chelsea Urson, my good friend Jamie Vance, 
the photographer Safa Kagan, who is just a sweetheart, uh, the author and entrepreneur Michael Brody Waite, my good friend Hallie Heeg, who's just incredible, and it was such a joy to have her on a while back to talk about eating disorders and recovery. The one and only Pushy Broad from the Bronx, my friend Ellen Stewart, who's also going to be a guest here pretty soon. I had an episode, uh, episode 73 was a repost of an episode of her podcast where she interviewed me, but I'm going to have her on here to interview her pretty shortly here. The author of Modern Manhood, Cleo Stiller. It was such an honor to have her on the show. The wonderful Amanda Kuda, Leslie Barabbas, Leslie B, Love Coach, Jungian Love Coach, Michael DeMulli, um, John Snyder. It was really great to reconnect with John Snyder this year, my high school journalism teacher. The one and only uh, Diana Pascal, who I just had a conversation with a couple days ago. Hopefully... Uh, she and I are going to be able to collaborate on some stuff in 2021. The author, Gregory B. Davis, who has one book out and is about to release another. My friend, Dr. Chantel Thomas, who is the director at The Manor, who became the current sponsor of the podcast. And I'm very grateful to the folks at The Manor and Windrose Recovery and for my friendship with Dr. Thomas. Lisa Cleary who I found her, I guess, on Instagram, um, author, journalist, Elise Gafkin, who is the photographer for one of my favorite musicians, one of them anyway, for Jason Isbell, incredible photographer. Um, Bryn Marhefka, who is a sex coach, who I was really excited to have her on. Julie Smith, who did the Election Day episode, uh, she's a media literacy expert. Um, felt like it was an apropos topic for that time. Um, the Jacksonville-based artist, Elena Olander, who is a sweetheart and such a cool person. Uh, Amy Effman, therapist in Boca Raton. Then there's my new friend, Andy Isham. Really cool guy. Another person I'm really happy to have become friends with in 2020. The Chanteuse Vare, the Montreal-based musician. Check her out on Spotify. And um, my yoga instructor, Chelsea Gage, who we had a great conversation. It was really nice to get to know her a little better outside of the yoga studio. Then Matt Kennedy, who was just on episode 99, is the owner of Gallery 30 South in Pasadena, California. He's going to be coming back for episode 101. We had a great conversation. Um, just a such an interesting group of people. And I feel privileged to have, you know, gotten to spend time with all of them and, and to get to know all of them. Then I have an episode coming up here soon with a feminist philosopher based in Western Ontario named Heather Stewart. That's going to be interesting. We had a fun conversation, really bright young woman, but here you're going to hear my conversation with Heather who um, it's actually the first person who I ever heard say she was a fan of this podcast and, um, just such a cool artist, Heather Sunquist Hall. have you on here and I just wanted to talk about this I hesitate to call it a collaboration because you did it but um, 
you know, the artwork for this hundredth episode as I guess, I don't know. I guess I reached out to you around 50, right? Mm -hmm. Close to that. Yeah. And I've just been kind of letting you know that, um, that as, as it's looming this 100th episode and, and I reached out to you back then and was hoping that you'd be willing to render your view of the path to authenticity, uh, in a way that only you could. And you did. (laughs) You did. (laughs) So what was, what was that like for you? Um, it was actually really, well, I mean, it was fun. I'll say that. And I also will say that it was really, um, you know, reflective of my own kind of, uh, it was nice to reflect on my own journey of, you know, kind of being in this, um, I don't know, just being who I am in the world. And, you know, as you grow, you just, um, you just change and you evolve and you learn things and sometimes are harder than others are not. So it was really fun to kind of spend some time just exploring that, um, and just exploring what, you know, what it means to feel or what, what I, what I hope the other side feels like, or just what it feels like to be on the inside. And, um, and also to kind of pare that all down in a very simple way, <laughs> which was, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of like a puzzle, I guess, in sorts. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I was definitely happy with it. And I just got the, uh, hard copies of, of the prints, um, in the mail just a few days ago. And anybody who's out there who wants this thing, I mean, when you receive something in the mail from Heather, it's definitely, (laughs) um, well, you know, you put your touches on stuff. Definitely. Um, and it's very warm and you know, it's like, uh, it's very apparent that there's someone on the other end who did this and took time and that it meant something to you when you did it, it mattered, you know? Mm. Yeah. Like the first time I ordered a few prints from you and I ended up with several more than I ordered. (laughs) Yeah. You do that sometimes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I feel like, I don't know. I, I feel like mail, you know, while I love that we get to have snail mail still in this digital world, I also feel like it is, um, it can still feel far, uh, in terms of helping people connect. It still feels like a kind of far away thing. And I just always want, I want people to feel held in a way. And I feel like sending like extra things or I created these cards, um, over, I think there's some in your package. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. they're square business cards with the print on one side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And on the back, it's just kind of describing, you know, what a hug is right now. And, you know, we're in a time and place where we can't. So I just, I'm like, I want to know, I want you to know that like, if I would see you in person, you know, I'd likely give you a hug or a high five or just, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's a human behind this. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and, uh, I actually had some of those made myself with the main cover art for the podcast Oh, cool! on one side. And then, on the other side, just the basic description of the show that I use at the beginning. Yeah, that's and, smart. Yeah, like my name and phone number on it to give to people. Um, yeah. Really, because like um, to go to art shows and stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. because that's one of the things that this podcast has given me um, is a reason to approach people and talk to people and engage with them and. And so, um, I'm kind of always looking for opportunities like that. And, you know, now obviously for the last nine months, I haven't really been able to do anything like that. Right. right. Yeah. In February I did. And, um, but right. yeah, that's, uh, that's something that I, this podcast has really enriched my life. Yeah. It yeah. has. And in, you know, just like to have the ability to do something like this with you, it was just not something that really would have been an option a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, you know, suddenly I have this creative outlet that, you know, I'm talking to painters and photographers and writers and coaches and, you know, just everybody. 
And, uh, you know, to anybody, if you look at the homepage of my website, this, some of Heather's art is featured very prominently. And, uh, I just feel like I get to do that. You know, I get yeah. to have other people's, um, passion and their work. I get to like showcase it and, I just feel like I'm lucky that I get to have that stuff on my website, you know, Yeah. because it's, well, it's all stuff that I love. Right. And that's part of the vision for this podcast too, is just to share that with yeah. people, you know, and to maybe, you know, have a few people hear about Heather Sunquist Hall who <laughs> might not have heard of her otherwise and may not have seen her Instagram feed or, golden hour prints or any of that stuff right yeah yeah i think it's um well i think two things i think you know what 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 is really great about what you provide with your podcast is connection and i think especially in this year like we're all needing connection or at least we're we're, we're reckoning with the fact that it's very easy to be disconnected and so i feel like you're providing that platform for people to feel connected um and then also too like you're I feel like with anything, um, you know, when you're, when you love whatever you're doing, it shows like you don't even probably even have to say any words, you know, like you, people just know, or, or, or the little that you do say, it just like kind of shines through. And so it feels really, um, I don't know when you're able to do those things in life, it's just so special and, and you just get to, you know, just it's pouring all of yourself into it. Um, yeah. it's not a chore. It's like actually a real joy yeah. and when you get to connect other people it just kind of like grows everything outward more yeah well it reminds me of a, i was talking about in one of the recent episodes this lit teacher i had in high school she taught american literature when i was a sophomore or junior i had her and i had had her in the past for like more comp related stuff and you know, that wasn't her thing. Mm -hmm. Lit was her thing. And she got, I mean, at least me, I don't know about everybody else, but she loved talking about Hester Prynne. You know, <laughs> she loved yeah. talking about Huckleberry Finn and, and, uh, turned me on to Walt Whitman. And, and it, it was really because she loved it. It was infectious. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's kind of what you're talking about is yeah. that, that, you know, it, it, when love is in it, it's just so much more powerful than it would be otherwise. Yeah. It is very contagious. I think, you mm -hmm. know, cause, cause you just, it, it's, it's like more, I guess, of like an energetical, energetical and energetic, <laughs> um, you know, it just flows outward and, you know, it's like just when people start laughing or, or, you know, with being around kids, like kids laughing or kids, you know, mm -hmm. being silly or doing things like they all want to mimic each other or they all just, you know, it's just contagious. Um, well, and so it's, yeah, it's and a gift the, when it can happen. <laughs> and then the connection thing, um, it's funny because this word has come up a number of times for me in different parts of my life, just over the last few days. And, um, I mean, I can't remember where I wrote it cause I journal and I've been emailing people about this stuff, but I was thinking about like my entire life purpose and all the things that I do, you know, as an addictions counselor and the writing that I do. And this podcast was really just, a uh, a way to do what I do with a broader scope to reach more people. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is trying to help people feel more connected to themselves. And by extension, when we're more connected to ourselves, we are more open to connect to other people. And yeah. that's, that really is what my life is all about. And, Another part of this podcast that I really haven't even gotten to scratch the surface much yet, uh, you know, the point was to build a community mm -hmm. of like-minded people and, mm -hmm. um, and a, you know, who can connect on a meaningful level and who knows where it might go, 
I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, that'll be your 200th episode uh, announcement, you know, the, you, the community that you've built, you know, the platform that you, you know, that'll yeah, be your well, next you know, chapter. I'm, and, and I have a lot of, uh, a lot of creative energy right now and a lot of stuff. I'm kind of starting to connect dots with projects and, and I am going to have some big stuff coming up in 2021. That's so that, great. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited and uh and I'm really excited for this year to come to an end. Oh boy, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh I remember yeah. the uh the year end episode last year I had you know someone on to talk about a vision for 2020. Mm -hmm. Um and man <laughs> that's been interesting, you know, oh, I just yeah. saw this video on Instagram a little while ago that somebody sent me and it was, um, it was, I'll send it to you when we get done here, but it was, uh, Satan on a dating app <laughs> and he connects with this woman and they meet and he, he's like, Two oh two oh, is that you? And she's like, it's twenty twenty, <laughs> and so it's like Satan oh in the God. year twenty twenty, yeah. falling in love, and yeah, oh yeah, yeah it really yeah. has been a year from hell. Yeah, this has been a year of. Uh, I think I said this when when we first got on the phone. Like it's been a year of interesting growth in ways you didn't think you um, necessarily needed to, or this is just me personally, like in, in, in just a lot of growth in lots of ways, um, and adaptability and flexibility and patience and, you know, all the words that are like, I don't know, the words that we take for granted or the words that we're like, all right, yeah. all right, I'm patient enough. It's like, actually, you probably should be more patient yeah. or <laughs> now you're forced to. Well, so. and, you know, it makes me think about one of the things that I say to clients sometimes and their families is, you know, sometimes it's got to get worse before it can get better. Yep. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's really, I believe that's where we're at because I think the overall trajectory of where we're going as a race, I feel like it is getting better and there's mm -hmm. a lot to look at and be discouraged about like, like the racism that is just, mm -hmm. you know, so ugly and, um, visible now and people are so emboldened to be just terrible in a way yeah. they weren't five years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's a lot of ugly to see, mm -hmm. but it's kind of yeah. like, you know, that nasty pimple that's got to come to a head and, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah, I hope, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think too, just, um, the, I think where we are now, it just sort of feels like, um, and I hope that it's, you know, it's not just a, it, for humanity, it's not just a phase that we, you know, once 2020 is over, anyone goes back to their old ways. You know, like I really feel like so much of it is um, obviously so much of it is systemic. Um, but I just I, I just hope that all the people that are getting into all the places where it's needed, that that bigger changes can happen to make things more equitable. And it just. Um, yeah, I just it's. And I, I feel that, and I don't know if that's just like my hopefulness, but it just feels like, um, I don't know. It just, it just feels like that's, we're at that place and it's just, there's no way to, no way to ignore that anymore. Yeah. Um, well, and I really think for the most part, at least from my point of view where I'm looking at things, it's mostly one generation of people that's like kind of standing in the way of progress. And they're yeah. getting pretty old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, I hate I, to I, say it that way, but I, yeah. I, I think that's true. You know, I really yeah. do. And I think it's getting better. So. Yeah. I think that there's lots of conscious things that we can do. Um, you know, I work at a school and so I think just even at the, just an out, how all the, you know, kind of systemic things have just become so, um, so much a part of like even little microcosms. It just feels like there's so many things that we, you know, as educators can be doing to support children and just things that, you know, 
it's like, yes, these things were in place. Um, and now we know that. And, you know, yes, this generation's, you know, not here for so much longer <laughs> per se, but there are things that we can all be doing, um, you know, with everyone um, yeah. to, to, to kind of uh, disrupt that and, and, you know, yeah. Well, shift. and um, one of the things you know, being a guy who's a bit of a journalist at heart, um, it's always driven me crazy that more people weren't engaged in um, public life or, you know, at least paying attention to what's going on in this country. I mean, I yeah. feel like we've been so spoiled that people could kind of afford to be indifferent. Yes. And yeah. that's a privilege. That's mm -hmm. that's really a white privilege. In this mm -hmm. country. And, um, you know, it's not right. And then so many people don't vote, you know, or have it. Thank right. God this year, yeah. um, more people did, but there's still a huge segment of the population who was eligible to vote, but didn't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the other thing that uh, maybe this is a good time to mention the I Speak Media Foundation and that mm -hmm. part of the proceeds for this artwork you created is going to go to that foundation in the interest of teaching media literacy, especially in underprivileged areas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that, you know, that is so important that because we're just at a place where the truth is in dispute. And people are just deciding, well, what I think is the truth instead of what you think is the, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's not actually about reality mm -hmm. for a lot of people yeah. anymore. And that's scary. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. But also I think the ability for, um, I really feel like social media and, um, and just, the, the way that the world works now with so much digital stuff, there are that while there's as many opportunities for um, misinformation and only getting the news that pertains to what you feel is appropriate and right, there's also a lot of really great education out there. And I feel like a lot of things that can't be, you know, like a lot of, um, I don't know, I, I, it feels like there's a lot of really important resources that can help. Um, and I feel that that's, and also just a lot of things that we're able to learn from, you know, so much of the digital landscape that yeah. are actually bringing so much of everything to light. That, yeah. Um, well, you know, um, it's, it's, I love the direct access to information. Yeah. I mean, especially when I really started to first play around with the internet a lot, it's like, you know, the poets I liked, I could find everything out about, you know, I could study Robert Frost or, or, and, you know, Roy Lichtenstein and whatever, you know, I mean, it was just all there right at my fingertips and I ate it up. Um, that's awesome. I think. And yeah. I think the other thing about the media that, um, I feel like for me, gives me a little hope and, and maybe we don't think about is that, you know, when newspapers initially became prevalent, there was, you know, yellow journalism, you know, there, mm -hmm. there, it was problematic. I mean, mm -hmm. people were, um, people were sensationalizing things and it was really about, you know, just getting people to read. It was very competitive. And, and that's when the media began to really become regulated in the interest of the citizenry. And, you know, I guess what I'm saying is that this isn't the only time in our history that we've had issues like this. It's just now the technology is different. Right. And, and it's just another form of the wild, wild West mm -hmm. that is slowly, gradually um, beginning to be better understood and tamed a little bit. You know, right, right. So yeah. there's there's hope. Yeah, and 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 again, like the platforms that are out there that are actually helping educate people, um, uh, and also to support people, you know, realizing their own biases that they don't understand or right. they haven't noticed before, or just no, you know, taking steps to, you know, like things like Patreon and, you know, 
webinars and all the things that are like are just at our fingertips now. It's just like there's no excuse to not. And also like it's so accessible. Um, well, you, you know, know, even just you ten, know, post on 20 Instagram years ago stuff. for me to do something like this, I would have had to have gotten a job at a radio station or owned one. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the flip side of it is the, um, there's a, a wealth of options for people. Mm -hmm. And especially like, I know you love music and being someone who loves music, it's like, it's so much easier for artists to get their stuff out there and for people to find it. And, you know, um, discovering new music is so much easier than it used to be. And yeah, it comes yeah. with a lot of pluses, you know, it right. really does. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if I was, um, I mean, I remember when I was in school, I, it was, like, I don't know, it was before necessarily like website, you know, portfolio pages and things. And I think my first year of college, I needed to get slides, uh, made. And I was just sort of like, I don't know, what am I supposed to do with these? And the people, the professors who were, you know, you know, had been doing this for years and, you know, nothing was formalized in, in computer land yet. They were like, Oh, you just, you know, roll up to a gallery with these slides and talk with them. I'm like, there's no way in hell I can do that. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like there's no way, like, so I feel like, you know, there's, um, I feel grateful to not have to exist in that time and place. And I feel grateful for, for, um, you know, platforms that exist on the internet and, um, to get work out there. And I feel like that's, um, a way that I can connect with people. Like kind of what you were talking about earlier, just, you know, connecting with people is your life's work. And I feel like to some degree with regard to my art, that feels the same, um, mm -hmm. or, or similar. I feel like there's something that's really important about, you know, like understanding yourself or just understanding your processing or your processes or your past and just reflection. And I feel like, um, it's so illuminating for what you put out there. And I feel like getting to do that and then also getting to do it in a place where people can see it from all over the world and have some sort of response to it and also maybe help them with their own, you know, right. reflection and things feels really important. So, well, the very first episode that. of this podcast was about a woman who, was sick in childhood and art is what healed her. And yeah. it happened again in her adulthood. She went through the same thing where she had this mysterious illness and, um, and that's what it was. And so her life's work became helping people heal through art. Yeah. And, that's and, yeah. and that's what it does. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, music, the visual arts, I mean, all of it, it, you know, it, um, first of all, it's like, um, um, like condensed humanity, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, like poetry was described to me by a professor one time as condensed language, you know, there's so much power in it cause it's all packed together and, yeah. and that's kind of like what a movie's like or a play. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. a lot of life that's all mm -hmm. expressed in a in a, you know, screenplay or whatever. And, and the same with, with, uh, your paintings yeah, or anyone. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. well, you know, I'm not surprised that you and I have this conversation and which I kind of loosely planned on being around 10 or 15 minutes. And here <laughs> we are. It's like a half hour later. Oh, that's um, funny. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, you're my kind of people and that's why I wanted to have you on the podcast and the first time. And, and, um, I'm glad you could come back and help me celebrate this. And, you know, hopefully we can sell some copies of this artwork and, uh, and I'm definitely going to buy more of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, and the, you know, percentage of the proceeds is going to go to a good cause and, um, That's and besides that, it's just cool, you know? Yeah. I, I love commemorating things. I feel like, you know, I'm a big fan of that. And I feel like being able to commemorate this feels really special to me. Um, and also to be able to support an organization that's doing some really good work also yeah. was like, you know, so great. So I'm excited yeah. for that. And yeah, I think, um, you know, we all need, um, like mile markers and we all need, yeah. um, you know, just, just opportunities to, to, 
reflect. And so hopefully yeah. this piece and, you know, we'll talk Well, it's a big deal to me, you know, I mean, a hundred episodes, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it baffles me to even think about it, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, and now being a guy who has a podcast and who's like looking for advertisers at times or just telling people about it or asking people to be on the podcast. I mean, a hundred episodes is, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot yeah. of content, you know? Yeah. And yeah. also, like, I put a lot of myself into this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's, you know, that's probably, uh, you know, 200 hours, approaching <laughs> 200 hours of sure. me having conversations with people. It's, yeah. you know, it's been an investment and it's it's just been great. So I appreciate your support and absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I look forward to, you got to come back on, Yeah, you know, I know you're going to have some cool stuff going on. I, I tried to connect you with the gallery owner a couple weeks ago oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and I'll be talking to him again. And I, I, he seems like somebody who would definitely like your work and, yeah. you know, anything I can ever do to help you. I want to be able to do that. Oh, thank you so much, Tom. And, and I feel the same. I feel I, I'm excited to, you know, continue to watch things grow and evolve for you and feel feel grateful too to have that resource with such a, you know, wide, wide um, array of folks who you connect with. I feel like yeah. it's always, inter you know, it's fun to watch who you, who you, you know, bring on and, and just to, you know, to kind of hear insight from so many different people. So I feel grateful for that. So, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Thanks. And, you know, if there's ever anyone who you feel like would make a good guest, let me know. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and one of these days, I'll I'll end up in Austin and meet yeah. you face to face. So I look yeah. forward to that. And Brian too. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. I got to meet Brian. Oh my gosh, you really do have to meet Brian. He's a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so are you. Thank you, Heather. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Path to Authenticity. If you'd like to learn more about our guest, you can find links in the show notes or visit our website at thepathtoauthenticity.com. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or you know someone who would make a great guest, email the show at thepathtoauthenticity at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you know someone else who would enjoy the show or even just a particular episode, please share it with them. Every little bit helps. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider becoming one wherever it is you choose to listen. You can find the show on Patreon, where by becoming a patron, you can hear episodes before they're released publicly. You can gain access to supplemental content. There are other benefits in the various tiers. Visit patreon.com slash the path to authenticity. Join our Facebook community or follow the show on Instagram, both at the path to authenticity. We also have a YouTube channel. You can connect with us on Twitter or Pinterest to hear the songs from this and every episode you can find the Path to Authenticity playlist on Spotify. Obviously, there are a lot of ways you could be spending your time, so I appreciate you spending some of it here with me. I'm Tom Gentry. Thanks for listening. Be nice.
You did great, honey. The Path to Authenticity is powered by Equivox. For digital marketing and web design services, visit Equivox.com.